Hello everybody, it's Antti here and this is The Beyond Testing Show. Welcome to our studio in the heart of Helsinki. Hello, this is Sami and welcome to the show. Today's topic, AI in testing. Is it real or hype? Yeah, this is a topic that like keeps popping up. Like this this whack a mole game. You yeah. Know? It's yeah. like it's always there whenever you look. It's yeah. like how do I optimize or how do I use my AI tools to be a better and more productive and efficient tester? Yeah. And yeah. you know, how especially the C level leaders they tend to ask. So how can we make our testing more efficient with the use of AI? Yeah, it, it <laughs> seems to be it, people are seeking. They they don't even have the reasons for it. They yeah, uh, they are true. just like, uh, well, one could be that how can I be more productive, mm-hmm. and is AI the answer to it? Yeah, but, uh, are you, there's too much guessing still. There's lots of guesswork, and I think like in the conversation there is like this hype in a sense in the conversation, but but. If we start, it's it's almost the same as we talk when we talk about about like test automation. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same because like if we start to think about let's automate testing. Yeah. We always should default into the question. So what about testing to be more specific? Should we automate? Yeah. Next. Yeah. And and thinking about AI in testing, it's the same thing. So what in testing is it that you want to leverage AI in now? That's I think that's the biggest question that yeah. most people forget to ask. So there is there is very little clarity or an, and specificity in the conversation about Absolutely. how to use AI in testing. So yeah, it's it's a broad question. How to use AI in writing a specific bug report would yeah. be a more detailed question. Now that would like give you a probably some more high value answers as well yeah absolutely and uh, and uh, also we are not uh, we have not answered to the automation questions still yeah that's true we don't even know yeah. how to use that yeah yet. exactly uh we we use it some places mm. and uh but no for instance automate all the things is a is a thing that uh, for instance management wants yeah everything yeah. needs to be automated yeah i think that's part of the uh, like the residue of the industrial age as yeah. well like automate all of the all of the production line yeah yeah and and like yeah it's that's not what software development is after. yeah yeah it's it's growing things not building things so so uh we need to figure out the context mm-hmm. quite a bit it's true first it's true. And uh, for instance, automation, it's, uh, it's too often separated from the t- rest of the testing work. Mm-hmm. Either you are doing manual testing or automation. Yeah. Even though it's just testing mm. and we use tools. And if we approach uh, the, this AI topic mm. from that perspective, it's easier. We are testing and using tools, which some are AI powered. Mm. I think that is more like, it's like, feels more specific yeah even now when you're explaining it yeah and uh you mentioned something about uh ai writing a bug report Mm. Uh, can it do it in a way that for instance uh uh can it include everything important to stakeholders can it map the uh wishes from the stakeholders and their expectations on the information exactly or does it just generate some nonsense yeah and it's quite uh inconsistent Mm -hmm. often and uh Often it creates more work. Mm. Like we have to you have clean. to curate curate the stuff, curate yeah, exactly. and clean and uh, create uh, like abstraction levels mm. or control uh, levels mm. to AI because uh, AI in itself uh, doesn't handle inputs or outputs that yeah. well, and all that like uh, lots of extra, yeah. even though it should <laughs> make us more productive. So I'm looking at that camera now because like I have a secret to share with you because like I've heard Sami at some point tell about an idea that maybe maybe I want to do a keynote or a seminar talk about why AI is rotten to the core. Rotten to the core. Listen to me. So so um is is there something to this statement? Because like this is sneak peek into what you've been thinking about, maybe putting together at some point. Yeah, yeah I've been I've been uh running trainings on yeah how to test ai yeah uh i haven't been using ai powered tools that much in testing mm. like to I, test software but yeah. more to test ai yeah systems. because okay. because the tools yeah. uh, for instance if uh, if i use ai powered tools to generate test cases mm. they often suck 
That's the <laughs> official term. <laughs> but yeah. uh, that was the political and, term. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it doesn't support my testing that well. Yeah. Uh, it uh, create noise, but. Uh, it's quite useful to test AI because uh, a lot of the systems we are building, the society is being built on. Mm. There's underlying layers of AI there. So we need to test that. Mm. We need to make sure that it works well and is consistent, reliable and so on. Uh, one of the elements in that are benchmarks. Mm. Uh, when you run a benchmark, it's a data set mm. that you run uh, to an AI model to... Uh, test whether it's functioning correctly and it, whether it's efficient and so on. And all the famous AI models like ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini, they are compared uh, based on these benchmarks. Mm. But um, if you do controlled tests on benchmarks, like uh, you change, you tweak the data set mm. a bit. Mm. For instance, the uh, MMLU, which uh, simulates a high school uh, questionnaire for for the for their tests mm. like you answer you ask a question and you have a four answers to it they are uh, put like uh, a b c d yeah like multiple choice questions multiple yeah, choice exactly. questions and if you change uh, those to one two three four mm. the results change <laughs> so uh, mm. you cannot rely on the benchmarks mm. themselves. Well, it's easy, easy fix. Let's change them back to A, B, C, D. But uh, the reason, the root cause, why is that happening? There's something to the tokenization process mm. that causes that. And if that's broken, then uh, the the whole foundation might be broken and we are n we are not looking into that is is this like a prediction that in two years we get to watch this episode and like are like saying that yeah Sami was right there is something rotten to the core with the organization process yeah i well i i'm just <laughs> i a, hope so <laughs> i'm just a humble explorer uh, yeah. and i came up with this we ran those tests in my training and it, it seemed that there's something fishy in the tokenization mm. itself. And it's an ingredient of AI. Mm. So, uh, well, I would love to investigate more. Or if, uh, if uh, among the audience are people who have done this, I would love to connect and compare notes. Because I have a lot, lot of other things to do in my life. and uh, But I would wish to dig more deeper into this topic, but mm. because there might be something there. So Yeah. Going back to the original question, like what's real and what's yeah. hype? Um, and what you are telling me here sounds like this is something real, like really concrete. You've been actually testing and you've been actually figuring out what's what's underneath yeah. the system and doing those benchmarks. And I think that, that stuff is real. And and comparing to what's hype, what's the hype? I think like if if we were to build this contrast of 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 hype and real, first of all, in this episode, um the the hype probably is the just the feeling of that air, waste of air, you know, yeah. <laughs> in talking about AI without being actually specific in what are the problems we're going to solve. And the, the reality is actually experimenting, maybe testing AI systems or experimenting, how can I use AI in solving a specific thing, X, Y, or Z? Yeah. For example, this like log file analysis, or how can I use AI in like analyzing screen screenshots or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but you have to be able to name the specifics of where you plan to use it. And if, if you just keep it on the level of leveraging AI in testing, you're just like talking about two super vague umbrella concepts yeah. without any like actual application. Yeah. So you need to bring it down. Like it's it's all, all also here, it's zooming in, bring it down to the like the practical hands-on stuff that you can actually yeah, yeah. do right now. Yeah. So I think like that's the thing, like you have to distinguish between the real and hype. Real is the thing that you can right now sit down to actually do. Yeah. And yeah. the hype is the conceptual, just like babbling about the stuff. Yeah. And even further, yeah. the real is uh knowing uh how they work, the tools. Mm, mm. Because, uh, for instance, uh, all the stuff we use, for instance, API technologies, REST, uh, uh, GraphQL, gRPC, uh, even uh, orchestration solutions like Kubernetes or, or, well, Dockerization or that, all of them have bugs mm. in them. AI has bugs. 
we need to be aware of those. Mm. For instance, if you are a developer who takes uh, Kubernetes mm. in 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 the work, the, these developers usually know about the shortcomings and they can mitigate those risks. But in AI, no one does mm. know those. We just consume that and we are not aware. And it's quite hard also to, to be aware because it's a black box. It does a lot of stuff that we are yeah. even the creators don't know what AI does and uh, it's quite hard to know about the tool yeah. if you don't have visibility in it so yeah so I'm um, <laughs> just like when you're talking there I'm getting sidetracked because I'm just looking at your shirt it says clarify yeah, yeah. clarify yeah and probably this whole answer this whole episode is about our ability to clarify yes yeah. yeah yeah you know like like just like take the hype out of it and drill deep into the details and the practical stuff that we can actually talk about yeah and and because like we started with talking about test automation there are lots of things lots of concepts inside of testing for example test strategy yeah. automation ai what, whatever there are lots of concepts that are just like these umbrellas and we tend to have like ten, we have a tendency to stay on this umbrella like 2D level of the conversation. But we actually, when we want to distinguish what's real and what's hype, we need to go from 2D into 3D and drill deeper into that specific detailed stuff. And like there was actually a conversation I had like um, uh, with with a communications coach. Um, and and that that conversation it was one of those my morning coffee conversations that I usually have, um, and and in that conversation she was like asking me so like what's what's like struck your fancy lately so like yeah. what have you find enjoyable, and 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 I I told her that yeah I I, I got excited about Baldur's Gate three like you know role playing games yeah. <laughs> on, on on computers I got got excited about that, and that was my like two two D like answer that was surface level answer and what she did was like it was phenomenal and i i took that like really like took notes about that and i want to learn that because like she did not just accept the question that i got excited about Baldur's Gate. she paused and then she asked so what is it about Baldur's Gate that you love so much and i was like yeah this brought me into this emotional connection and this detailed connection to the Baldur's Gate. Yeah, yeah. so so I think that's the question that we as testers and professionals in any domain need to start to learn to ask. So what is it about automation that you want to actually solve now? Yeah. What is it about AI that you want to solve now and code 3D? What is yeah. it about testing strategy that you want to talk about yeah. now? So um, so that what is it about question is probably the tool that I, if you, if you take, if you call it any kind of a tool, Think about this as a tool. What is it about X, Y, or Z? Yeah. Uh, as a tool, the question is actually leading you to the 3D. Yeah, yeah, and it makes it real. Yeah, it makes it real. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that that helps also with AI. Yeah. So, uh, and but it, what it, what frustrates me mm. that uh, overall people seem to disregard that question. What is the reason to use AI? Is it productivity? Mm. Do we what specific uh, gain we want from this tool? Mm. Uh, and is it because our bosses tell us to do that or what? Yeah. Some they have some uh, metrics that uh, the whole company has to have 67% AI coverage. Do you do, do you know what do you want to know my reason for using AI? Absolute, every day? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it does not solve my problems. I still need to curate a lot of stuff but but like in the core of it um like there was one morning when I I I I just like I had watched the Iron Man movie. That first Iron Man movie, if you yeah. remember. And 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 there was this AI assistant called Jarvis, <laughs> you know, yes. and, and I was like, yeah, I want to be Tony Stark and I want my Jarvis. And and I set up my like smart home system with Amazon tools, you know, yeah. uh, with uh, smart lights and like smart plugs for the coffee brewer and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, this is who I want to be. And like, like the first morning when I told my Amazon system, good morning, and it would brew my coffee and set up the morning lights, I was like, yeah, it's happened. So I'm, I'm super excited about the prospect of having my own Jarvis, being 
seeing the Tony Stark. And that's actually what's, what like drives me forward with learning about AI, not necessarily specific efficiency needs or stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's my vision of like, this is so juicy for me to maybe someday be like Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I I use AI all the time. Yeah. For instance, uh, when I, I when I do offers to customers or whether I check my ideas or mm. generate I- ideas, I I don't come up with anything. I have a, a bad day or something, and mm. uh, and it helps. It's like a prosthesis for me. Mm. But first, I need to <laughs> come up with the reason. What what's the prosthesis for? Mm. Am I missing a leg, <laughs> or um, is my thinking uh, somehow uh, defective yeah. that the AI will help? And uh, the reasons, the real. Yeah. So yeah, that's my. Uh, all I'm asking is professionalism. I I want people to be professional about it. Mm. Now now it doesn't seem that much. Yeah. So so if we were to answer what's real, what's hype. Lots of the conversation we see today seems to be hype yeah. because they don't go into those details. Yeah. And being professional is about going into details to actually figure it out. Yeah. So um, uh, do you feel like we've been like answering the question? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Somewhere there. Somewhere yeah. along the we're, lines, we're exactly. We're closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, is there a takeaway that like you would want to leave the audience with from this conversation? Well, I would stick with the like facts mm. like what's actually wh- how it helps you yeah. and stick it with the real parts and not speculate yeah and that uh, and use the question what is it about yeah this specific concept that you want to talk yeah, about yeah. being specific yeah. yeah okay that's a that's a wrap i would have to say if you feel like uh you want to ask questions from us please don't hesitate to use the comments field or reach out to us personally we would love to address your questions in the future episodes of beyond testing also don't forget to hammer that subscribe button gently (laughs) take care and see you on the next episode bye